Now the chance to see uh, Jason Hanley in action, Vince Kinchin in action. Those two lead the uh, qualification at the moment. Jason Hanley on two wins, maximum 20 points. for Vince Kinchin, Jason Hanley has missed the start so this could be an interesting one and just as I say that he goes straight through on the inside John Underwood on the outside of him but Jason Hanley with a fantastic first hit from John Underwood now we've not seen too much of John Underwood in the early heat perhaps he's uh, had machinery problems and now started to sort things out Vince Kinchin is finding his way through in the third place. And that is the will be a challenge. Kinchin in third. And if they come up past me, Jason Hanley's making it look so, so casual. Taylor is the rider in fourth place at the moment, making sure that Vince Kinchin doesn't get too far away from him. <laughs> Looking for three lives and the three wins. He comes towards the checkered flag. No, he doesn't. He's got another lap to do. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> As a lap scorer, as a panic in next to me, we'll see on the back of Chester's face. Right? This guy, he won't be a Chester's flag. It means that he's had three lives, he's had three wins. John Underwood gets second, Vince Kinchin gets third, and Mark Taylor in fourth. Thank you, sponsored by F. Knight and Sons, the building suppliers. A win, he's third, as I've mentioned more than once before, for 95. That, of course, is Jason Hanley. In second place, number 77, that's John Underwood. In third place, number 8, Vince Kinchin. In fourth place, number 170, Mark Taylor. In fifth place, number 36, Mike Topless. And sixth place, number 6, the reserve Phil Ranson. The winning time, 143.2, 143.2. situation is that Robert Bath leads on nine points. He's had a first and a second. Shane Parker's had two seconds on eight points. Calvin Tatum's on eight points, a third and a first. Simon Wig on eight points, two seconds. Paul Hurry, seven points, a second and a third. So do any of those go in this one? As I quickly look down the list, I can see that Paul Hurry does. Steve Sofield, of course, he pushed over the line in his last ride, goes in this one. Robert Bath is in this one as well. So watch for them as they go into that first turn, as it is indeed as Steve Scofield has got to the front. Robert Bath is going around the outside in the blue helmet. In the moment, it's all over. Come together going down the back straight. 
Well, Robert Bath tries to take the racing line, that put Paul Hurry off for a moment, but he's back there fighting in. Steve Schofield sitting there in third, watching what's going on ahead of him. And the back straight, Paul Hurry in pursuit. Steve Schofield trying to be pulled along by Paul Hurry. Bath looks to be in terrific form, comes up past me, leading, but Paul Hurry comes back at him. Tries the outside line this time, and that's going to be a very long way round, but it could be a very quick line for Paul Hurry. He cuts back underneath, looking for the challenge. Will he get the better drive into the pit there? Close his ride up. Look for the outside again. He's going underneath Robert Bath. Paul Hurry is at the front. Robert Bath in second. Will that pull Scurry along? Scurry closes up on the... Robert Bath as they go into that top turn, but it is Paul Hurry, the wild card for this afternoon. Paul Hurry is taking a win. Robert Bath in second, Steve Schofield in third, then Cunningham in fourth, and Mick Brown finishing just in fifth. Lots of action this afternoon, Paul Hurry for the Brit Paul Hurry, the international solo heat seven, sponsored by Seat Cornhouse. Get your tickets online now. Paul Hurry, the international solo heat seven, sponsored by Seat Cornhouse Garage. Let's go down the places then from the top. Rider number eighteen, Z Max Nine Wine, finished in sixth place. He gets zero points. Uh, you're tempted, aren't you? I'm going to do it before the end of the day. I'm sure we're going to get a Neil Park come up here somewhere along the line. But <laughs> rider number fifteen. Mike Drone finished in fifth place, he gets one point. Rider number seven, Paul Hurry, a fantastic win for Paul Hurry, maximum five points. Rider number 12, Steve Schofield, third place and three points. Rider number two, Robert Bath, second place and four points. Rider number one, Glenn Cunningham, fourth place and two points. A winning time of 136.8, 136. .8, 136. <laughs> should be passing on those sort of trade secrets to you but I'm going to anyway. Now you can see from the back wheel of Matthias Kruger that he really has dropped down into a gully. Well, the tapes have pulled away from the front wheels. And we look to see them go and they break and it's the red helmet colour on the inside of Bernd Dana that have made the best of the starts but that changes as they go into the first turn. It's Simon Cross that's gone all the way around the outside. There's Simon Cross. Second place at the moment. That's the red helmet colour of Bernd Dana. In, in replacement for Gert Riss and really rising to the challenge. Matthias Kruger with a win, his second time out. Dives through in second, but no, he stays in third. He's looking to challenge his countryman, Bernd Dana, as he goes down that Kruger, right on the back wheel of the Bernstein, as they go into the pit bend for the second time. Thank you very much, and stays away from it. He leaves, as he did in his first ride. Oh, a great ride this from Bernstein. He's scoring well this afternoon. Matthias Kruger can't do anything about that second at the moment. He's Well, at the 
moment. As time is got equally is to be comfortable in front of the field. Picking up for you in fourth place, it is the Italian Massimo Mora. He isn't to let those front runners go away from him, but sitting comfortably in fourth. He'll be pleased with this heat victory as he takes the jacket flag and gets his second win for this afternoon. Van Dana finishes in second, Matthias Kruger in the third, and Massimo Mora in fourth at Oxford. The international heat eight, and let's go from the top. Right at number five is Van Dana. He finished in second place. He gets four points. Rider number 10, Ralph Loading in fifth place. He gets one point. Number 17 was Christoph Dubenard in sixth place and no points. Number 11, Massimo Mora, fourth place, two points. that winning time. On to Heat 9, the third in this particular run of heats. We've got Heat 7, 8 and 9. This is the third ride for all these riders. We see Simon Wig, Kelvin Tatum, Anthony Suave, Uppy Boss, Shane Parker and Colin Earl. So Shane Parker, Kelvin Tatum and Simon Wig all on eight points. Shane Parker has had a two seconds, Simon Wig has had two seconds, Kelvin Tatum a third and a first. So what will they sort out from this, their third ride as they get underway? Look for the helmet colours, the blue of Kelvin Tatum, the red of Simon Wig. First bend, it's Wig that's got the lead, Kelvin Tatum is right there with him though. Anthony Suave is in third place. Simon Wig has got away. Get on here in the feet, Tatum has stayed with Simon Wig. As they come up past me, Wiggy looks over his shoulder. Calvin Tatum is right there with him. It is Anthony Suave and Shane Parker in fourth place. So we look to see the challenge from Kelvin Tatum. In the back straight, leading from Tatum at the moment. Suave in third place. Up past me for the second time they go and Wiggy still leads from Kelvin Tatum. The most important thing of course is qualifying for that A final. They want maximum points out of these seats. Kelvin Tatum had a brilliant top turn that time. He's got a lot of Wiggy certainly looks quick down the straight, but it's the corner that Kelvin Tatum is going to Again. Are we going to see a challenge on this top turn? This is where he looks faster on the entrance of this top turn and he's got it. He's got through on the inside. Simon Wig has now got to do the work to come back. And remember, Wig, he looks faster on the side. So he goes down that back straight as Kelvin Tatum timed it perfectly. Goes into that bottom turn and it'll be the Kelvin Tatum takes the win. Simon Wig gets second. Close to this third place. Anthony Swarm hangs on to it. Shane Parker has to be settling with fourth place. It's heat nine it is in the international event, sponsored by Abingdon Beds Limited. The Van Pine and Brass Specialist, it says. I've got to read it all out. The places and the points for number 14, that's Simon Wig. Second place and four points. Number nine is Kelvin Tatum. First place and maximum five points. Number 13 is Anthony Swarm. That's third place and three points. Number six, Uppy Boss. Sixth place, no points. Number three is Shane Parker, fourth place and two points. Number eight, Colin Earl, fifth place and one point. The winning time, 135.8, 135.8.
good start, but he's over Matthews, just come up with him. Great tip. He's got a wage on Horsey in fourth at the moment. Into the top turn we go. Rob Bradley and Han Holmes again have got into that first turn in first place. They come down past me, leading from Ivor Matthews in second. John Halsey in third. That's the end of the pit Bradley and Ann Holmes look to be getting away from the down. Because they've got the measure of the circuit. Ivor Matthews in the second place at the moment, not able to catch those front runners, Rob Bradley and Ann Holmes. But John Halsey and Jason Glenny have got some work to do as they close right up on the Ivor Matthews. Again, a terrific ride from Rob Bradley and Ann Holmes as they maintain that lead coming off the top turn. Well, oh, John Halsey's been forced to go the long way round. John Halsey gets close again. Will he get the inside line coming out of the bend? He's going for it, certainly, as they come towards the line. Rob Bradley takes the win, and John Halsey gets second. Just on the line. A terrific last bend from John Halsey and Jason Glenny. So worldwide, worldwide, worldwide express careers. A win for number 87. That's Rob Bradley and Ann Holmes. In second place, number 13, is John Halsey and Jason Glenny. In third place, number 15, Ivor Matthews and Simon War. In fourth place, number one, Craig Cheatham and Clive Reynolds. In fifth place, number 62, Mike Turrell and Tony Baysby. And in sixth place, number six, Russelling and Tony Bemister. The winning time, 141.9. 141.9, that winning time. The lead goes for the outside line. Who's going to get the better of it coming out the bend? Gary Jackson's gone a very, very long way round, but Tim Bennett has gone the quick way on the inside. Tim Bennett then, with the lead, from Gary Jackson in second. Colin Blackwood, trying to stay in third place. In the third. But it's Tim Bennett and Steve Hartley leading from Gary Jackson. Still there in third at the moment, under pressure from Rob Wilson. Rob looking for the long outside line. Comes back underneath though, looks to the inside. Where's Gary Jackson going to attack Rob? Outside of time, back one. Rob Wilson starting to close up already as they go into that top turn. But it's Tim Bennett and Steve Hargrave who are still keeping the lead. From Gary Jackson. Gary Jackson gets close once again, though. Look at his way he's coming. And it's the inside of his wall.
wide and leave a gap on the inside that's what Rob will be looking for as they pan out and come through on the inside Gary Jackson looks for the inside it's going to be close to the line close on the line indeed I wouldn't want to split those two up very very close indeed I'm looking at my uh, lap scorers and we've got a line judge here but that was very very close there couldn't be any more than the depth of the tyre between it. Fly around the caravan, we get official notice from the referee sitting upstairs who's directly in line with the finishing line. The result, therefore, is a win for outfit number 23. His third win this afternoon, Gary Jackson and Mixtace. In second place, it means that we've got number 12. That's Tim Bennett and Steve Hargreaves. In third place, number 24, Rob Wilson and Tony Miles and in fourth place number 25 Colin Blackbourne and Graham Ashby no other finishes there and a winning time of 139.3 139.3 John Hiscock, has he gone too fast into that first turn? He's gone very, very wide. Richard Thomas has seen it. He's come underneath. The three of them come together almost in front of him. Richard Thomas is in second. John Hiscock in third. Basically, close as they went over the humps in front of me. But Duncan Tolhurst was the one who got the advantage. He stayed in front now as Richard Thomas chases after him in second. Dacia and Rob Chance, I should say, and they're close enough on Richard Thomas. And it looks as if this on the front side. And as you watch them come off this top turn into the last lap, it's Duncan Tolhurst and Will Jones that lead from Richard Thomas and Kevin Woodley. Dave Steer and Rob Sharrax flying in that bottom turn, trying to make a challenge on second perhaps. Close up again, they come out of that bottom bend very, very quickly. Tap for the driver, let him know that somebody's challenging. As they come off that top turn into the checkered flag, this time they come, and it will be for Duncan Collins and passenger Will Jones. In second, Richard Thomas and Kevin Woodley. It's a win for outfit number 74. That is, of course, Duncan Tolhurst and passenger Will Jones. In second place, number 60, Richard Thomas and Kevin Woodley. In third place, number 17 is Dave Steer and Rob Sharrox. In fourth place, number 45, Neil Hiscock and Martin Smith. In fifth place, number 96, Matthew Tyrrell and Jamie Bree. And in sixth place, number 184, coasting home, John Hiscock and Jason Gill. 140.6 is the winning time, 140.6.
Really best performance from him this afternoon, so he needs to get a good ride in this one. Well, happy boss being advised that he's come out a race too early. <laughs> no, we're not going to have seven in this one. Oppy is uh, immediately told to go back to the pit box as the rest of the riders are brought in line. Interesting, perhaps, that we've got Robert Barth on this outside gate. Well, who's going to make the best from the start as the Reds go up and they get underway? Robert Barth has lifted. It's Anthony Suave that's got into the front as they go into that first turn. Robert Barth is on the outside, though, and goes all the way round. So, Anthony Suave is the lead. Got Robert Barth chasing him though. If they go into that pit bend, the rest of the riders will be content for the second or will he want another win? Anthony Swarbrick, but he's got a catch if he's going to do the winning. Number 18 is the next night one that's in third place at the moment. They're being challenged for that, and Robert Barth has had an attack. Oh, they really are opening the gap between that third and fourth place. But it's Anthony Suave that eyes are on at the moment, leading from the rubber bar. Well, it's Massimo Mora. Who else would you expect to be challenging like that? Massimo Mora in that third place now as he's got round the outside. And as we look to the far side, it is Suave that leads from Robert Bath as they go into the pit turn. Land this time as they come by me, as Robert Barth calculated that a second place will be enough for him. Well, there's no point in doing anything silly if you know that with a second place you are guaranteed a place in the A final because it's a straight race. Winner across the line takes maximum 25 points. And that does look to me with Robert Barth. That second place as they come to the checkered flag. It's a win for Anthony Schwab that could do his place a lot of good. Robert Bath in second, Massimo in third place. First of the last heats, if that makes any sense to you whatsoever. It's heat 10. It's sponsored by Broadside Racing Products, and they've got a van in the pits, as you can see in brackets there. Race 25 it was, and from the top, rider number 11, Massimo Mora, finished in third place. He gets three points. Number 18, the Czech, Zadnek Snidewind, he finished in fourth place, gets two points. Number 8, Colin Earl, he stopped with engine problems, no points. Number 13, Anthony Suave, first place and maximum five points. Number 10, Ralph Loading, fifth place and one point. Number 2, Robert Barth, second place and four points, a winning time of very much. Wouldn't rely on my adding up anyway. We'll uh, leave it to the experts to my left as we concentrate on race 26. Uppy Boss does go in this one. He's allowed out. Shane Parker definitely in with a chance of getting in the A final. He's on 10 points at the moment. Simon Cross also on 10 points. Look for him in white. Christoph Dubenard, Glenn Cunningham and Mike Grant. Away they go, who's made the best of the starts, that looks like Crossy has got to the front as they go into the first turn, it is Simon Cross. Shane Parker is up there in second place, being challenged in green by Glenn Cunningham. So Glenn Cunningham on the outside of Shane Parker, those two fighting the second place, but while they're fighting the second Simon Cross has got away, and Crossy goes wide, coming up past me. But a great battle going on for second place. Glenn Cunningham just noses in front of Shane Parker. 
Mike Curran is there in fourth place at the moment, but there's a gap between him and third. As really you can see. Thirdly, Cunningham looking to make a challenge. Remember right back to his very first ride, he missed out on points with a puncher, but he's certainly made up for it since. Well, as he flies into that top turn, Simon Cross doing everything he can to stay in front of Glenn Cunningham. Glenn really is now pushing him hard. He's Between him and Shane Park, if Shane Park announces him in third place, it is a question of whether to push him. He comes off that pit then, into the last turn, casually looks over his shoulder, into the top bend he goes. Glenn Cunningham still right there with him. He's not far away from that back wheel as they come round off that top turn and down the back stroke. In third place, we'll pick up three point four that third spot. Into the B final. Jack Tag is made ready, Glenn gets those, but Simon Cross takes the win. Glenn Cunningham in second, Shane Parker in third. And Mike Brown in fourth place. This is heat 11 of the International Solo. It's sponsored by Trevor Hedge Racing. And the results, if you look at rider number six, Uppy Boss from the Netherlands. Stopped with machinery problems, no points. Number three, Shane Parker from Australia. Third place and three points. Number 16, wearing the white helmet colour, our very own Simon Cross. He had a win. It means maximum five points. Number 17, Christophe Dubenard in fifth place, one point. Number one, Glenn Cunningham, a great ride from him in second place, three points. Three, I should, I've got that wrong, haven't I? That should be four. Can't even write things down properly now. Second place, four points. Mike Thrawn, number 15, fourth place, two points. So you should have a winning time of 136.5, 136.5. is anxiously trying to call the riders in but this is crunch time this is a question of getting in to that a final or b or c they can't all score top points in this seat that sounds a bit obvious but they may well have worked out what positions they need we watch to see what happens the tapes go up the way we go Oh, Kelvin Taylor's made a good one on the outside. There's Steve Schofield has got to the front. But that changes as they go around that first turn as Paul Hurry noses in front. But now Kelvin Taylor. Kelvin Taylor down the back straight. Rackings going along with it. Paul Hurry in third place. And Simon Wigg at the moment at the back of the field. So has he got enough points from his other eyes? Calvin Tatum looking for maximum, Steve Schofield looking to get in that A final as well. Will Paul Hurry be in there? Paul Hurry's up in third place. As they go down the back straight, Schofield on the third place. Well, will he get that extra ounce of drive as he goes down the back straight? Challenges into the bottom turn. He's waving and cheering as he comes up fast up, challenging Calvin Tatum. Calvin looks over his shoulder. Paul Hurry is still there in contention in third. Number four, Matthias Fulger, riding hard in fourth place at the moment. Oh, 
this may not be the A final. But as they go down the match straight, I do feel it's going to be enough to be able to say that. He comes towards the last lap flag. Still with Steve Schofield in his way. Paul Hurry will get three points for this third place. 15 points may be enough to get him in. We'll wait to see how the points all pan out after this last race. Going again, challenges down the back straight. Pushes up closer and closer. Well, remember Steve Schofield. He's got nine points coming into this last ride. He gets close to Kelvin Tatum and takes the checkered flag. So Kelvin Tatum takes the maximum five points which puts him in top point scoring position by my unofficial reckoning. Solo Heat 12, the last of the qualifying heats. It was sponsored by Faulkner's Yamaha, Honda, Derby and Galera, the family firm that cares, it says. And of course, we now want the results of race 27. Then the frantic adding up of the points. Let's give you the places and points. Right. Race 27 it is, rider number 12, Steve Schofield, you saw him in a second place, he gets four points. Rider number 7, Paul Hurry, in third place, three points. Rider number 4, Matthias Kruger, fourth place, two points. Rider number 5, Bert Dana, in sixth place, no points. Simon Wig, number 14, in fifth place, one point. Kelvin Tatum, number 9, a magnificent first place, maximum five points, and the winning time, 135.6, 135.6. The places were two, three, four, six, five, and one. The points were four, three, two, zero, one, and five. 135.6. So, as the point scorers start to add all the points up, work out who goes in what final. We will be back after an interval where they will be out with the track preparation equipment to try and recover any damage that's been done, just to check on the, everything around the circuit. Chance for you then to have a wander around, perhaps have a walk through the pits to have a look at the machinery over to the... ...should be between number 95, Jason Handley, number 86, Andy Rimmer, number 8, Vince Kinchin, number 158, Wayne Broadhurst, number 18, Ricky Scarborough, number 15, Neil Scopes, number 77, John Underwood, and number 27, Kevin Buck. Under starters' orders, they're getting close to the tapes. The referee won't be happy with that. He lets them go, and as they get underway, you can see that Jason Hanley has completely missed the start. This one could be interesting. He's up in the third place, though, as he gets into that top corner. Neil Scopes, it is that's leading at the moment. And as I say, that's already going for the lead, and he goes down the back straight. Comes off that bottom turn. Neil Scopes is right there with him. Wayne Broadhurst up in third. Ricky Scarber in fourth. Vince Kinchin in fifth. That's how they go into that top turn. But it's Jason Hanley that's setting the pace. I remind you that, as it says in the Three fifty British for the second time. Just two weeks to go. In the three we were so pleased to see Jason return to the racing scene. And what a fantastic achievement to get that title back again. So look at the way they're closing up for that second spot. Wayne Broadhurst has moved through. Ricky Scarborough is trying to get round the outside. Neil Stokes is trying not to do that. Ricky Scarborough down the outside. Those three fighting the second, third, and fourth into the last lap he goes. Jason Hanley comfortably leading the 350. And problems for Neil Scopes. I think Neil Scopes has picked up a puncher in the back wheel. The way he's looking down at his machinery, the way it's been very difficult to control. You can see he's down there. He's a Coming across the line to win the final. 
Terrific result for Jason Hanley. Wayne Borders in second, Ricky Scarborough in third, Andy Rimmer in fourth, and Vince Pinchin in fifth. Race 28 then, the first of our finals this afternoon. It was a 350 support class, it was a win for the man who did nothing but win this afternoon. 95, Jason Hanley. In second place, number 158, Wayne Borders. In third place, number 18, that's Ricky Scarborough. In fourth place, number 86, Andy Rimmer. In fifth place, number 8, which I can't remember the life of me, who number eight is, of course, it's Vince Kinchin. In sixth place, number 77, John Underwood. In seventh place, number 27, Kevin Buck. And in eighth place, number 15, Neil Scopes. The winning time, 138.8, 138.8. That final sponsored by the anonymous number 20. These qualifiers before, so this is the qualifiers for the International C final. Sponsored by Bassett Cleansing Services. And if I can get this out without laughing, I'll be doing well. You bump it, we pump it, it no jobby too big. Made it. <laughs> Read into that whatever you wish. The qualifiers, the race 29, international solo seat final are number 15, that's Mike Grohl. Number 18, Zydanek Schneidwinder. Number 10, Rolf Londing. Number 17, Christoph Dubenard. Number 8, Colin Earl. And number 6, Uppy Boss. Mike Throne, who was sitting equal 10th coming into this third round. He had 14 points in the previous two rounds. He uh, was top point scorer coming into this C final. Zednex Nardewine was, uh, he won the actual C final in uh, Adarb in uh, Holland. He in fact was sitting in equal eighth place coming into this uh, final this afternoon. All six of them line up. We watch to see the tapes go, away they go, Snidewind it is, that's got a good start from the outside as they break into that first turn. And we'll pick them up for you as they come off that first turn, but it is Zednex Snidewind that's got to the front as he goes down the back. And we'll pick them up for you as they come round because the positions are changing for a second. Well, anxiously looking for... Christian Dubenard perhaps, number 18 of this side wind, but well oh, indeed I'm looking at rider number six up in box. Back straight. Right wind in a second spot at the moment, but coming by this afternoon, showing that when he's on form he can beat the best. Up he was leading from Snidewind, from in third place, Mick Grohn. Rider number 15, and it starts to change. Snidewinder has a challenge for the lead as he goes down the back straight. Snidewinder is from up the box in second, and he's the groom closing up on second as well. And he goes for second place into the last lap they go, so it's not all over yet. Happy Boss under pressure from Mick Brown as he goes in hard and tight on that top end, and he's got Happy Boss. As he goes into that top turn on the outlet, he looks as if uh, Mick Warren is going to go up. He's closing rapidly down on Snidewine. He goes into this pit turn, can he do it on the last turn? He's just come off that bottom turn, Mick Warren has certainly had a go. But it is number 18 from the Czech Republic. Zednax Nightwine that wins the first of the international finals this afternoon. We've seen a win for Zednax Nightwine. Let's give you the exact positions of all the finishers. We start from the top as we have been doing all day. Number 15, Mike Grohn. 
Unfortunately, he's excluded by the referee, so no position and just one point. These, of course, are international championship points. Number 18, Zednak Snyderwinder, a first place and six points to add to his overall total. Number 10, Rolf Lauding was in fourth place and three championship points. Number 17, Christian Dubenard, in third place, four points. Number 8, Colin Earl, in fifth place, two points. And number 6, Opios, in second place, five points. The winning time, 140.7, 140.7 the winning time. Number 17, Christian Dubenard, in third place, four points. Number eight, Colin Earl, in fifth place, two points. And number six, Opios, in second place, five points. The winning time, 140.7, 140.7 the winning time. You should have places of an exclusion, first, fourth, third, fifth and second. Points, championship points, these are one, six, three, four, two and five. We now move to the B final, where we see Simon Wick, Shane Parker, Manius Kruger, Glenn Cunningham, Glenn Dana, and Massey Mumora. Away they go, and this one certainly could be a battle royal as they go into that first bend. Simon Wig has made the break. Simon Wig has got to the front. He's got Shane Parker with him. I can't make out who that is going around the outside at the moment. I'm sure on the far side you can confirm that, but I'm looking at the yellow black Cunningham will pick him up for you as he comes past me this time. Simon Wick certainly leads. It is Glenn Cunningham that's in second. Shane Parker in third. Glenn Dana in fourth ahead of Matthias Kruger and Massimo Mora. But it is the Glenn Cunningham and Simon Wick that come together in that top end. Wick in the inside. Cunningham has dropped the brake though as he goes down the back straight. He now pulls away in the back of the end. Simon Wick will try and stay with him. He wants to stay in touch with this competition. Carrying so many injuries at the moment, Simon Wig. This is a fantastic achievement to even compete on a circuit like this for Simon Wig. Around the top corner he goes, and Glenn Cunningham looks to be... <laughs> 12 championship points. He will want to make sure of this as he goes into the last lap. Simon Wig is still there in second. Shane Parker closing in in third. Matthias Kruger in fourth. Massimo Moro has moved up in front of Brent Dana as they go into that last turn. Down the back straight to Shane Parker. We watch to see what happens as they come to the checkered flag. Well, it's Glenn Cunningham that takes it. Simon Wick gets second. Shane Parker in third. Matthias Kruger's got back into fourth place. And Massimo Moro in fifth. then the international solo B final and a terrific ride from Glenn Cunningham. That gives him of course 12 championship points to add to his total of 23 that he scored already. So we had 12 to that, we'll give him 35. But don't worry about that for the moment, we'll let the point scorers and everybody add all those initial results. This one's sponsored by New Track Components. And for number 14, Simon Wig, we get a place of second place, 11 points. For rider number 3, Shane Parker, third place, and 10 points. For rider number four, Matthias Kruger, fourth place, nine points. For rider number one, Glenn Cunningham, first place and 12 points. For number five, Bernd Dana, sixth place and seven points. For rider number 11, Massimo Mora, fifth place and eight points. The winning time was 136.8, 136.8 that winning time.
The first round was won by Calvin Tatum. He got into the A-final in that first round. He was also in the Marmand A-final in the second round. That was a fourth place. Robert Bath rode in the A-final of both rounds. He finished third in the first round. He won the second round. He goes again in this third round. Simon Cross finished fifth in the A-final in the first round. He finished sixth in the A-final. He's made them both. He again makes this final. The wild card, Paul Hurry is in there. Steve Schofield, who got second in Marmande, goes and they get underway as we get them into that first turn. Simon Cross it is that's got to the front as they go to that first turn. Well, they sort themselves out on that first bend. It is Crossy, they've all got it. Looking at Calvin Tatum, he's a little bit down the field at the moment, he's fourth perhaps, looking to come through. Comes out as Simon Cross is leading. Simon Cross in the lead from Calvin Tatum in second, from Paul Hurry in third. It was Robert Bath who was back in fourth place. And Calvin Tatum goes after Simon Cross. He gets closer and closer to him. Calvin Tatum makes it. Tatum to come back at him. Calvin Tatum still there in second place. Simon Cross the lead and the problems of Simon Cross. Simon Cross pulls out. It means that we see Calvin Tatum take over the lead. Paul Hurry up into second. And as they go down the back they go. Steve Schofield in fourth at the moment. Anthony Swarth not having things the best of it at the back of the field. Coming as we go into the last lap, it's Calvin Tatum that leads from Bull Hurry. A terrific ride from Bull Hurry this afternoon. Came in as the wild card rider in this the UK round. Goes off that top bend following in the trail. Calvin Tatum, but look at Steve Schofield closing on Robert Barr. Can he catch him on the last bend? Comes back at him as they come to the line. Tatum takes it. Harry's in second and Scully finishes in third. A terrific ride from all three of the Brits there. One, two, three. Robert Bath in fourth. <laughs> Abingdon, the North Barts Club, were awarded this third round of the international long track grass track final. There are two more rounds to go. If you can save the pennies and travel over to Germany for the last round, I think you're in for a sensation. But what a fantastic display of racing here this afternoon. The official result of race 31, new track component sponsored this one was that for rider number nine it was a first place for calvin tatum maximum 25 points his second win in this just the third round he won the first he was fourth in the second round he's now won the third round rider number two robert bath was leading the competition after two rounds he's finished fourth in this a final he's got 16 points for that position Number 16, Simon Cross again is hit with problems. He finishes in sixth place. He's credited with 13 points. Number seven, the wild card, Paul Hurry. Finished in second place. He gets 20 points. That's put him on the world map. Number 12, Steve Schofield. A tremendous ride from Steve Schofield to get up into third place. He gets 18 points. Number 13, Anthony Suave, finished in fifth place. He gets 14 championship points. 
The winning time was 136.7. 136.7. Your places, 1, 4, 6, 2, 3, and 5. Your points, 25, 16, 13, 20, 18, 14, 1. for the final, Tim Bennett is up in second, Gary Jackson is in third, Richard Thomas in fourth. So John Halsey and Jason Glennie who won the Barks Bonanza here. <laughs> the front of the field it's John Halsey and Jason Glennie that lead from Tim Bennett and Steve Hargreaves. Gary Jackson's trying to find a way through to get up into that second place. And Gary Jackson McStay's still in third. Are they getting closer on that top turn? It looks as if Tim Bennett's doing enough at the moment to hold Gary Jackson off. But Gary Jackson looks to the inside. Everything is correct. He now pulls the power on. Comes down towards us as Gary Jackson again challenges. It's going to be a win for John Halsey and Jason Glennie. Second to Tim Bennett and Steve Arbery. Gary Jackson and Mitch Chase finish in third. Richard Thomas, Kevin Woodley in fourth. Wow, what a tremendous double for John Halsey and Jason Glennie. They made a terrific start to the season with what we class as being the first big national meeting of the season, the Barks Bonanza, here at Dalton Barracks. They won that one, they've now done the double and won this World Championship round support race. Fantastic ride from John Halsey and Jason Glennie. Earlier on in the day, I've got to say, they didn't look as if they were actually on form today, but whatever was wrong, they sorted it, they saved it for the final. Terrific ride once again from Tim Bennett and Steve Hargrey. So congratulations, let's give you the official result. It was a win for outfit number 13, that of course is John Halsey and Jason Glennie. In second, number 12, Tim Bennett and Steve Hargreaves. In third, number 23, Gary Jackson and Mick Stace. In fourth, number 60, Richard Thomas and Kevin Woodley. In fifth, number 87, Rob Bradley and Ann Holmes. And in sixth place, number 74, Tim Duncan Tolers and Will Jones. 135.3 was the winning time, 135.3. And whilst I say that that one was sponsored by Hewenden M40 Motorcycles, and I also draw your attention to the presentation of awards, which will take place shortly, not as it says there on the finishing line, but at the truck down near the uh, solo start line. <laughs> what should be the solo start line? <laughs> um, the Ron Coles wagon, you can see where all the presentation trophies are set out already. We'll be doing a full presentation to the riders. And we thank all our officials. I understand that our referee has had to uh, dash off a bit quickly. We can say a quick thank you for their her participation in this meeting.
Jonathan Lurasing is uh, putting his notes together for this presentation. I'd like to introduce one or two people to you. And uh, I'd like to start off by introducing you to the president of our jury, Mr. Christian Ferrer. Thank you. 
UK. Why the third round? Well, you're halfway through the competition. You've seen what's happened in the first round, you've seen what's happened in the second round. We knew this morning that Robert Barth was leading the competition. We knew we had a great contingent of trip riders. We knew they'd ridden here and out of What could they possibly do? Well, I say to you that we've ended up with three Brits. One, two, and three. They've really thought it was going to be done. It's been great pleasure to bring up here in third place. He is, of course, the man that pushed across the line to get one little point the final. Stevie Smith!
got one more trophy to give away. Perhaps, as always, the most important trophy. The trophy you get for winning. It's not easy. You've seen this afternoon, we've had some fantastic racing. And I think when we saw that line up for the final, there was a lot of questions buzzing around the crowd of who would do it, who wouldn't do it, or us. But you cannot deny this man's talent. Yeah, he's a fantastic rider who again and again puts in performances like you've seen this afternoon. I'm talking of none other than our rider. He rides under the label of Great Britain. It is, of course, the winner this afternoon. That's it, the photos are done, I can get you to have a word. Kelvin, I've got to start by saying three rounds, you've won two of them. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm absolutely delighted. Uh, I had an just before the first round, just to make the place more than yours were. Uh, I owe a lot of thanks to the gentleman who was in today, actually, because it's all over. I'm actually welded the tendon in my index finger back together, so I'd like to start with that. But uh, to win my home, I'm going to bring three groups from the first step of the first. Well, I agree, fantastic, and easy way for this guy to build yeah, you know, uh, that was the hardest round so far, I think. Uh, the track was very fast, so challenging, and uh, that was really made a difference. I think it's sort of the same thing, but it's really hard to do it. But, uh, you know, I was there, you know, I was there during the race, and I was just back in my own work, and that's where I want to be. Well, absolutely, and you know there's an awful lot of the ground here that's really behind you all the way. We give you the congratulations, obviously, a little bit of a point for you over that centre place as well. Yeah, that was uh, couldn't have put out better really. Um, but uh, there's two tough frames to come. Um, but, uh, obviously it's best to be I'm in a nice position, but uh, I can't uh, take anything for granted. I thought it would be my most to continue to win in the next two rounds. Well indeed, all our thoughts are in the next two rounds, but for this afternoon, one, two, three was of course our very own Steve Schofield in third. Paul Hurry in second, and the overall winner.
the season's not over yet. We've got a lot more racing to go before the end of the season. I want to wish you all a very, very safe journey home. I hope, and all the people behind me, I hope, we wish to see you at a grass track very soon. Thanks, and goodbye. If I can have a reasonable one today, and uh... feels I'm, I'm getting better, and I've still got like a hell of a lot to learn. Take your riders up in that second and third place. That does look to me like Simon Cross. Right on the back wheel, Simon Cross. Tucker on the inside. They're pushing each other on, closing up on Matthew Kruger. Just then they go, and it is Robert Bath that's got to the front. Glenn Cunningham's right there with him. And Glenn loses out on the exit of that bend. Kelvin Tatum has gone all the way around the outside, but it's Paul Hurry that's got the lead at the moment. Between the three bricks at the full change as they go into that top turn. Simon Wig that's got to the front. Wiggy it is that piles the pressure on and goes down that back straight. They go down the back I'm taking a bow if they do that bit bed. The rest of the ride is sort of down. Yeah. Grant is going along with it for Hurry in third place. Quickly is down that back straight. Paul Hurry gets up underneath Simon Wig and gets up in the second. Come through. Up to the front as they go to that first turn. He gets closer and closer to him. Kelvin Taylor. 